Hey, hey, I want to make a quick video about what to do with your waste, your spent microgreens trays after you harvest them, what's left over of the root mass and your growing medium, what do you do with that? And I want to make this video now because I'm actually changing my process. Uh, in the four years that I've been growing microgreens, I've actually changed my process of waste removal about three or four times and this is because of the nuances of each farm. I've been in three different farm locations, as well as there being some sort of problem that needs to be mitigated. Uh, so stay tuned, because I'm about to share with you the different waste removal tactics I was using in each one of my farms. And if you stay to the end, you're gonna hear exactly what's happening to me right now, which is forcing me to change the way I get rid of my waste. So when I first started farming microgreens, I was operating in my parents' basement, which was below ground. This was a pain in the ass because I had to take all my soil, the big heavy bags of soil down the stairs. And then after I harvested my trays, all of that leftover waste material would go into this big tote on wheels and I would have to lug it up the stairs again. And then I was kind of just dumping it in my parents' backyard. And we live in the suburbs, it's not a whole lot of property here. Um, so over time that started to really build up as well. But it actually worked out because this was at the very beginning of my business. So it wasn't all that much waste. But when I moved into my next farm, this was an old rundown deli that I took over and made into my urban farm and it was actually on the ground floor. My landlord loved taking care of animals. He was big into animal husbandry. So he had a bunch of animals in the backyard, a whole bunch of space. So it was no problem for me to dump my waste back there. What I would do is after harvesting the microgreens, the spent trays, I would just dump into a wheelbarrow. I would wheel it out into the back and dump it. And over time, it would just make a big pile. The chickens and the animals could pick at it and then eventually we kind of just get turned over and composted and used for vegetable gardening outside. Um, that worked out pretty well because there was space and there was a bunch of animals back there anyway, so if any type of rodents got in there, it didn't really matter. The only changes that really would have happened at this location is that I went from one wheelbarrow to two wheelbarrows because as I scaled up, it just made more sense because we were getting more done in a week and there was more to dump. So then after that location, I ended up here in my third urban farm. And this one was a little bit different because I was on, I'm now on a property that's a little bit more well-managed and this farm happens to be a little bit above the ground. So, when I first moved in, what I was doing is I had one wheelbarrow, which stayed inside, which we dumped the trays into, and then there would be a wheelbarrow outside, which was on the ground level. So I would dump the first wheelbarrow out the door into the second one, and then I would dump that right here on the property, similarly to how I did at my second farm location. We had the big pile of spent microgreens trays removed at the end of the first season, and when we did that, we realized that there had been some rats that were living in there. They burrow their ways through the, uh, they burrow tunnels essentially through these big mounds of spent microgreens trays. And they also use it as food, the leftover seeds that didn't actually sprout and grow into microgreens, they'll then eat that. So we realized that at the end of the first season. And um, so that was when I switched my process to, instead of going wheelbarrow into the wheelbarrow and then dumping here on site, I actually teamed up with a local business who does composting and vermicomposting. And this ended up being a very symbiotic relationship because I wanted to get rid of my waste at no additional cost. And this composting company just wanted additional plant matter to turn into more compost. So I made an agreement with him where he would bring these big blue bins and instead of dumping into another wheelbarrow, I would dump into these big blue bins. And then once they would get full, he would come with his dump truck and then we would use a tractor with a pallet, uh, like a pallet jack on it. And he would essentially dump these big blue bins into his dump truck and then bring it to his composting site. This was working out very well for the past few months in the second season, but the rats did make their way into the bins recently. They were eating it, living in it, 
and they ended up multiplying. It started becoming a problem. So the new solution is that instead of storing anything outside, I'm gonna store it inside. So what I did is I bought these big 96 gallon, um, essentially garbage bins, these big, they're called toters. Toter! I got them from Home Depot and they store a lot of these spent trays. I can fit somewhere between 50 and 70 trays in there. And then what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna have six of these big garbage bins. And then once they all get filled, I'm gonna wheel them outside I'm gonna load them onto a five foot by 10 foot utility trailer that'll be hitched to my car. And then I'm gonna wheel these to a local farm because they do composting there. So this is gonna be my new way of removing waste. They're gonna go into these garbage bins that are gonna stay inside, then they're gonna get wheeled out and then dumped in a local place where it's more fit for that location. Now, the good thing about these bins is that they're super heavy duty and they could store a lot of trays. But when they do get full, they do get pretty heavy. So that's something to keep in mind. Nevertheless, uh, that's what I'm doing now. You know, I had the problem of the rats getting into the spent trays. So this is now the solution that I'm going to be using moving forward. Hopefully it works. It seems like it's working pretty well so far. I've filled up one of these toters. And these toters. <laughs> yeah, these big ass toters. Careful. 96 gallons. And uh, they're just filled up. They're pretty heavy at this point. And we're gonna load them onto a U-Haul trailer that I just rented for 25 bucks, which is so cheap. And then we're gonna bring it to a local farm where they do composting and we'll try to drop it there. So the one thing that I'm worried about is slightly worried about like wheeling these toters up into the U-Haul because they're really heavy. And then the second thing I'm worried about, which is, a, which is a little bit more of a concern, is like, how do I get this stuff out of these toters? So I'm gonna, my plan is just to tip it over sideways, but they're heavy. And then I have a feeling like a lot of stuff is gonna stick to the bottom. So I have gloves and a shovel. So we're gonna see how this goes, but this is my first time doing it. I was trying to figure out the trailer situation. Um, and that took a little while, so I just kept on buying more toters. I'm up to six of these things that are $100 each. All right. So I'm going to bring out a few to here. And then I'll... Actually, let's back up the trailer right now. I'm going to back it up into here, so it's just a shorter run. Because these pebbles are going to be a pain in the ass to carry the toters over. Alright. <laughs> You're in the same exact spot. I know. I'm not that good at, at maneuvering this thing. I was trying to like get it into here. Yeah. And the first time I did it, I thought that this was gonna be too long, it's just not the right angle. It up. I'll figure out the best way to do this. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna have to like pawn it off. <laughs> Alright, so good thing for these railings. I'm going to transplant this inside. Okay. 
It's starting to rain. Yeah, Alright, I'm not using the ratchet strap because these things are not going anywhere. Not a chance. They're heavy, super heavy, and the side of it almost comes all the way to the top of the garbage can, so those aren't going anywhere. Got that done in the process. I'm sweating, these things are heavy. And it's hot out still. Let's roll, we're going. We're gonna take a little drive to the farm, the other farm. All right, ready to go. It's starting to rain, of course, now. It's starting to rain heavy, of course. It's hot. I guess this rain will cool us off. All right. On the trailer, we got the toters. Oh my gosh, why am I so hot right now? Nice wide turn. Smooth, maybe semi-smooth. This next farm is about five minutes away from my location. So it's really not too bad. <clears throat> Even if something was like 20 minutes away, it wouldn't be bad because you're only doing this maybe every three weeks, a month, depending on your scale. I mean, somebody small scale could really do this every two months with a few toters. I'm doing about 130, 140 trays per week. So I have six toters and it takes about three weeks to fill them up. Obviously you could do bigger trailer, more toters, less often trips, but I think it's really just about finding a balance that works. It's pretty much all, what was that? Oh, one of the can lids just flew open. All right, so these should go in a certain way, so that way the wind is going in a way that would prevent that from happening rather than cause it from happening. So yeah, I guess they gotta go in the other way. Flapping in the wind. See, nice easy drive through the back streets. Oh, 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 oh. Please, brakes work. Nice right hand turn. Easy peasy. And the park is gonna come up right here where they have a farm and do some Nice medium scale composting. It's really small scale. Um, here we go. Nice and easy. So I'm going to pull out into this field so I can get a good angle and then I'm going to back this thing up as close to the compost as possible. Nope, the wrong way. Alright, I'm going to go clear these sticks out of the way. Come on through! See that flopped open. The right way is this, is this uh, last one that we put in. That's the correct way to do it to prevent that from happening. Look, I found some microgreens. Look at these little microgreens coming up. <laughs> think. Think we're good? Something I've already learned about uh, like moving these toters around in the trailer is there's really two ways to hold these things. You can put the weight on the wheels and roll them or you can put the weight on the, like the bottom of the bin and the inside of this trailer is grooved. So if your weight's on the wheels and you try to rotate this toter, you're going to likely snap off your wheels. So. If you're going to be rotating the bins within the trailer and it has grooves, you want to have it in the flat position so you don't screw up your wheels. All right, quite easier to unload. So I think I'm going to go in sideways like this, put this down. 
Let me see. This is the first one I filled up. And you can see it's starting to mold on top and start starting to break down. But it doesn't look wicked or anything. It's just like a little bit of mold starting on top. And it's been maybe three weeks. So I'm happy. And this, it used to be higher too. The level was higher. So it's definitely starting to break down. We'll see what it looks like as it comes out. All right, hope this works. Lots of bugs. All right, that was super easy. And literally nothing is stuck to the bottom of this bin. This is great. Look, nothing. And that's about how much it produces when it's emptied. And you can see all the bugs flying around and the fresh produce. Hey, what's that? Get this out of there. All right, so bin number one, done. Moving along. <laughs> so I'm rotating this off the wheels. Otherwise they will snap right off. This is the heavy one. Let's see if I can do it alone. Nice spot to get leverage to pick it up from the wheel well. Down here is a good spot, and then over here. I just want to get everything out because I feel like if there's loose dirt in the bottom, then that'll start uh, causing stuff to stick. But again, perfect. Nothing stuck. So I didn't need my ratchet strap. I haven't needed my shovel or my gloves yet. This is working out nice. It's kind of hard to get it like deep into the compost. Do you see a pitchfork anywhere? Say, these are pretty well designed. Oh my god, so many bugs over here. Thought I was gonna need a small shovel when I really I needed a big one or a pitchfork. Whoa, look at this! <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's what I thought. Alright, so all these peas, the mat was put in here upside down. And now the peas are regrowing upside down back through their root system. <laughs> and through this mat too, over here. So cool. Farm life. Two more. Actually this shovel works pretty good because it's stabbing into the trees. I think uh, pitchfork would be best though. Woo! All right. So I think I get dirtier receiving soil and taking in soil than getting rid of it. So I think that's a good sign. So the way you bring them in is the way they should stay. Toter. All right, toters are loaded up. Let's get out of here. All 
All right, that's that. Drive back to the farm, dump these toters off, and then bring the trailer back. Easy as that. It was only 25 bucks to rent this trailer from U-Haul. So it literally stopped raining for our dumping. So it was raining as we were leaving, and then it started raining when we were done. So that's just perfect timing. The universe definitely uh, was on our side today, and everything went great. So I'm happy. And now it's time to bring the trailer back to U-Haul, and that's it. Yeah, so I hope this video helps any new microgreens farmers who are just getting started. Maybe this gives you a good idea of how you can get rid of this waste. Or if you're scaling your microgreens business and the waste is starting to build up, maybe this video gives you um, a new idea for disposing of that waste that's now getting too much for you. So I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you next time.